Welcome to the Gunplay Network. I'm Murdoch, and this is 5-Minute Mecha, where I've got 5 minutes to give you the rundown on a mech. Today we're looking at the Psycho Gundam. This thing could fight Godzilla. The MRX-009 Psycho Gundam is probably actually capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Godzilla, honestly. It's tall enough at 40 meters tall in mobile suit mode. Oh yeah, this thing is such a massive walking fortress that it actually has a mobile fortress mode. That's right, not a mobile armor mode, mobile fortress. Damn boy, he fit! From what I can gather, as there isn't a whole lot of backstory or development information we can really draw from, but there is some. The Psycho Gundam essentially has its origins in the idea that the Titans were leaning on several Federation new type labs, Augusta and Morisame included, to develop both new type use machines and artificial new types in the place of natural ones to pilot them. Meaning, mainly because naturally occurring new types were still a one in almost a million kind of thing at that point. There's some filler here and there with experimental prototype machines that were basically variants of the Alex before something that controlled bits came to be. But even that proto psycho Gundam had some major issues and hospitalized, if not outright killed its pilots by putting too much strain on their noggins. For the Titans though, this kind of underhanded work once they were formed in the late UC-83 was commonplace. <laughs> For example, it would be later discovered that École du Ciel in Montreal was used as a new type farm and many tragedies would occur along the way. But we're not here for that, are we? We're here to talk about the Psycho Gundam. Well, the brief summary I gave there is the Coles Notes version of what happened over the course of roughly six, six and a half years between the end of the One Year War and when we first see the Psycho Gundam appear in Zeta. So why is the Psycho Gundam 40 meters tall? Well, Partially because of its early generation Psychomu system requiring so much space, along with its Minovsky craft system. But that's not all. It also had an anti beam barrier, and they're pretty vague here, but sounds to me like an eye field generator of sorts, and a complicated transformation system. So even if scientists and engineers within the Murasame Institute wanted to try and shrink the form factor of all the crazy technologies packed into this thing, they were too early in the research and development phase to make anything remotely smaller. Those breakthroughs wouldn't come for years, or in some cases, decades later. The other thing to note about the Psycho Gundam is that it is controlled pretty much exclusively by the Psychomu system, which is another reason why it's so massive. Because if you think about it, that would imply the need to integrate the system throughout the, a significant portion of the machine's endoskeleton. On top of that, it can be operated remotely by the use of an integrated feature known as the Psycho Control System. As in, the pilot doesn't even have to be in it, making this machine the first the audience sees that's capable of being completely remote controlled from thought on screen. The Psycho Gundam wasn't just huge because of its fancy if cumbersome Psycho hardware. It also came packing some serious firepower. Working our way from the top down, right in the head above the cockpit is mounted two small mega beam cannons in the V-fin crest. Next, we have its terror weapon, a devastating set of three diffuse mega particle cannons, which is a very complicated way of saying the equivalent of energy shotguns mounted like buttons in this thing's torso. Moving down to the hands, its main distance and melee weapons. Why distance? Well, each digit is a beam cannon. 
beam cannon. That's ten of them. And they can be individually manipulated to all point at different things. And then you have its great big shield, which breaks apart mobile fortress mode. Why is it called mobile fortress mode, you might ask? Well, because of in the one year war, the Federation was working on Minovsky craft system powered small battleships capable of operating in the air, sea, or land that had this role designation of mobile fortress. Most of its armor and frame materials were primarily Gandarium as well, making it extremely tanky. Two of this machine were built, however, only the second Psycho Gundam specimen would receive the Psycho Control System. The same machine we see four use both against and then later alongside Camille during the Griff's conflict. The MRX-009 Psycho Gundam would be the direct basis for its successors, the MRX-10 Psycho Gundam Mark II, the MRX-11 Mass Production Psycho Gundam, the dubiously canon MRX-12 Psycho Gundam Mark III, and the non-canon to Universal Sentry MOX-12 Psycho Gundam Mark IV. More on the actually canon Psycho Gundam Mark IV later, because that thing would be a component into Moon Gundam. That's neither here nor there right now. So ultimately, the vast majority of the Psycho Gundam line would destroy the minds of its pilots due to the Psychomu systems being incomplete and lacking some kind of safety limiter. which honestly seems to be modus operandi of the Titans when it comes to virtually everything they do, except for maybe the Titans test team for some reason. Push the envelope with stolen data, and demand nothing but results, people are easily replaced. Anyway, that about covers things here. See you next time.